Nicked and the Trapper player. All right, so in this first game, we're going to be looking at Maggie, who comes with that pet Trapjaw Daisy. Maggie's an excellent trapper here. Using that Trapjaw pet of hers, it almost adds a fifth teammate to the squad. Daisy can revive teammates, but most importantly, she's going to track the monster. And now as long as the trapper is following Daisy, she will inevitably beeline directly towards the monster. Another important aspect of Maggie is going to be her harpoon traps. That's what makes her so different from the other trapper. They have to be laid like a mine, and they have an arm time, and she can lay up to five of them. Look for those to be big playmakers in this match as that's going to stop the monster right in his tracks. Jay Party, I'm really excited. We threw a ask us anything about the trapper questions to the fans last week. We got so many amazing questions. We whittled them down to our favorites and we will be answering those questions, four of them, later on the stream. Stay tuned for that. In the meantime, let's get down to business, Jay Party. Let's see how this trapper and the rest of the gang fares against our monster played by Scott. The monster. The strength of the Trapper class is the ability to contain the monster and force the fight. Deploying the mobile arena is critical to your team's success. Hold the equip button to take the mobile arena down. The machine pistol has a wide spread, but deals significant damage in the firefight. Harpoon traps can be placed on the ground to limit a monster's mobility, allowing teammates to deal extra damage and escape from danger. Daisy, the pet trap jaw, sniffs out the monster and its tracks, leading the team to combat more quickly. She will also try to revive incapped players. Jay Party, we also reached out to the experts at Turtle Rock Studios and Ask them some questions of our own about the mobile arena, about Griffin, about Maggie, and the Trapper in general. And they came back with some amazing facts about the Trapper class. We're going to share those as well with the fans today. Yeah, it's crazy how much the questions people asked actually made me think about it and realize there's so much of the game I don't even understand yet. But anyway, folks, we're going to jump right back into the game in progress here as those hunters are just about to drop out of the dropship. All right, here they go, Jay Party, led by Maggie and Daisy. As we know, Daisy becomes that fifth member of the team. She's able to res teammates from incapacitation, and she can even carry the team if she's the last one left. The monster sometimes will make the mistake of not focusing down Daisy there in the late game. Daisy comes back to save the day. We've seen Daisy MVP so many times. Alrighty, and look, they got some easy footprints to spot here. They know exactly which direction to start in, and that's so important. Look for the Trapper trying to get ahead of the team. The Trapper actually moves a little bit quicker than the other squad members. So important for the Trapper to get ahead. Like you said, the Trapper is the one that needs to drop that mobile arena. You see Davy sn Daisy sniffing out the monster here. Lost the footprints there for a bit, but now the Trapper pings the map. Finally seeing footprints. They are on the trail here. A good technique to use, Jay Party, is that burst with the jetpack. If you double tap the jetpack button, you're going to burst forward. That's going to allow you to gain some ground on the monster. I love this. They're not sure which way he went at this fork here. Kind of an indecisive footprint. They're going to have to maybe take a guess here or rely on Daisy to spot the trail. And it looks like they're thinking this way. Hopefully they chose correctly here as going the wrong way this early could be a free level two for the monster and not what this team wants. As you can see, Daisy sniffing the ground there. That means that the monster is using that stealth sneak ability. Finally on the trail here, she is beelining for the monster. You see the trapper here, Jay Party, pulling out the mobile arena, getting ready to drop the dome. That's advanced maneuvers right there. You need to have that dome ready. Yeah, trying to be ready here. The Trapper knows that the most important thing to get off first is the mobile arena. And that will contain the monster and force this fight. Um, looks like they haven't spotted him yet, though. Laying out these harpoon traps just as potential here. Oh, but look at that. They get an eyes on him. He's sneaking, but he's going to have to stop that as they have spotted him here. And the dome goes down, Jay Party. The monster is in. They have the fight that they want here at stage one, but he is focusing the trapper now. Jay Party, we know that if the trapper goes down, so does the dome, but lost sight of him there. Gonna try and take the fight to the rest of the hunters. Yeah, good decision early on to go for the trapper, as it will bring down the dome, and most importantly, prevent all crowd control from this team here, allowing the monster to do whatever he wants. Unfortunately, he can't single him out, and the hunters have reformed up with each other, and that's the position they want to be in here. He saw that the hunters were grouped up, so he tries to use the flame breath there to do massive damage to all of them, but he gets trapped 
tranked early by the medic. The medic relentless with the tranks, and you're seeing the trapper being shielded there, also laying down those harpoon traps, trying to lock the monster down. Right now, he's running around pretty well. I love what the trapper's doing here. You see they're laying down those harpoon traps on top of climbable surfaces. The reason she's doing that is when the monster tries to climb, he'll get triggered like we see there at the harpoons, and that's going to prevent all climbing and most jumping from the monster. I love that. It prevents him from getting up to that higher elevated platform and dodging a lot of the damage. Medic doing a great job painting those weak spots on the monster. As you can see, the uh, trapper there using the machine pistol to hit those weak spots, doing a lot of damage. It's a good spread on that machine pistol. You're able to hit multiple weak spots, doing max damage to the monster. Very little damage to the monster so far. This fight going all right. Ooh, but he's going back in here. Wants to get some nether hits off with the fire breath. I'm surprised about this. That armor is not high, and he's still stage one. I think he knows the cooldown on the mobile arena is still going, though, so he's got some room to fight. I think he, it's a good decision, Jay Party, because even though he did have just a sliver of armor, the hunters weren't expecting it. He was able to come in and do some good damage, but maybe not enough, and there's a harpoon in his back, and Jay Party, he's down a full bar of health. And that's the strength of those harpoons against Goliath. I love it. A harpoon in the back is so much stronger than one in the front. It prevents him from destroying it as easily. And with these harpoon traps against the Goliath, he's going to leap through the traps often. And that's going to get him right in the back. And that's where you want harpoons. Trying to focus on support, he realizes that Val, which would normally be the primary target here, is being shielded by from uh, support and kept in the game. Support is then a nice target to go after. Gets him down to low health, but the medic comes back in with the med gun. And the monster's on the run again. Two bars of health. Yeah, surprisingly went back in, did not get any in-cap penalties on the team, though, and the monster drops to half health in that fight. An, int an interesting exchange, seeing as the monster chose to make that. And uh, we'll see if it pays off for him later, as he's taken some big hits to his health here at Stage 1. Just about ready to evolve, though, Jay Party, and he's on the run now. Goliath with some big leaps, able to move across the map with a leap and a bound, and the hunters again have lost his trail. And look at our trapper here. She knows there's only a couple exits from this area of the map, and she's going to line it with these harpoon traps, particularly on the edges. Once again, wants to catch the monster trying to climb. Once the harpoon is in the monster, it immediately stops climbing, and he'll fall from any elevated place he's at. I'm really excited to bring the facts that we learned from TRS into the uh, stream here today, Jay Party. Some good tidbits of information for the fans. I also did learn a thing or two about the Trapper class by doing this. And you see the monster on the run here. He is ready to evolve. And he picks up a perk that's worth mentioning there, that was an elite tyrant, and that's going to give him that health regen perk, the rarest and one of the strongest perks in the game here, and this is going to pay huge dividends for him. He gets it at level one after a poor exchange. There could not have been a better perk for him to get at this time in the game. A nice spot to evolve, and Jay Party, you see the fog rolling in here. That's the dynamic weather system and the rain, Jay Party. This is going to cut down on visibility and make it harder for the hunters to find the monster. Yeah, as well as reduce some of the footprint trail that he leaves here. This is an ideal element for the monster, particularly early on where he's trying to stay hidden like this and using that smell to his advantage he'll still have perfect vision such a good swing of events for the monster so far in this game support pinging the map he does have sight of the monster there you see when the red pings are on the map that means they're actually physically pinging the monster when you see the yellow pings it's just the general direction monster gets the sneak pounce on the teammate that's support that's down they need to shoot the monster to get him up he does but that's an in-capped support and that's a down penalty for sure jay party well played by that monster although they stopped the pounce he immediately change it with a charge and that's enough to take down the support oh, but doesn't matter he's back into this fight as Val gets people up in a hurry that is her job low jetpack on the trapper can't get up the cliff there the monster in the fight in the mobile arena here tries to get the medic but a nice jetpack by the medic to get out of the way yeah, once again, this monster looking pretty solid, even without that armor. Look how high his health has gotten with the combination of leveling and that health regen perk, just so powerful. And they cannot keep him off these cliffs. They need to get him down on the ground level to fight him. Big rock throw on support, focusing support again. If he can get support down to two strikes, that's going to be huge for the monster. Jay Party, one more hit should do it. But clutch heals from the medic, keeping support in the game. Big time rock, though, and he goes down. We saw another great play by the Hunter Squad there. They noticed that was an elite perk sitting there, and that's the damage bonus. Perk. They quickly killed that creature, the crow build, took its perk, and now they have that increased damage bonus for this fight. And all four of them have the perk, Jay Party. That's going to be big time damage from this hunter team here. And they are in the mobile arena. Being uh, chased right now is the monster. He's trying to do as much damage as he can. Now focusing assault. Got him on the run there. Big time damage with that charge, but misses the rock. 
Yeah, getting stuck by a couple of harpoon traps, but he's able to break free here. And with that arena down, he's gonna be okay to just run from this fight. And this monster, although not getting a lot of headway, he gets two in-cap penalties on the support, and that's gonna come in big. Support is what they rely on to keep the medic in this fight, as well as all the other characters. If that support gets knocked out too early, they're gonna have a hard time staying standing. Hunter team chattering very well in the background. That was the trapper making sure that his full team picked up the double damage perk. So doing a great job, not only leading the charge here and getting that dome on the monster, but teamwork as well, making sure his team is taken care of and that they're all doing max damage. Looking at our medic here, we see on the edge of the screen the trapper running far ahead, and that's a pretty standard formation for now. The team, it's up to them to stay responsibly close enough so that they can defend the trapper if he catches the monster. Startled birds, that means the monster ran through a flock of birds, being a little careless there here at stage two. And the hunters see where he is. They got shields on the medic from support down below. But right now, they seem to be a bit confused on what his location is. Trapper on the run here, though, with that mobile arena out, ready to throw it when he needs to. Yeah, we missed some action there. The monster was actually sneaking on top of the rock and almost caught the medic. Medic was able to dodge just in time to get out of the way here, but now the monster has gotten mostly out of range. We'll see if this catches them. Oh, and they get it, although a weird arena to fight in. Very elevated. This could be difficult for the hunters to get up on top. Another arena, nicely done there. More tranks from the medic, keeping the monster locked down. Trapper trying to come in here with more of those harpoons. And Jay Party, as you mentioned earlier, he is trying to put those down on elevated spots because that's where the monster is going to gravitate to during this fight. And you see there the Trapper is down and out, waiting for the drop ship, a minute 52. And look at that, the support goes out of this fight almost immediately. That's what we were talking about, those down penalties so big. Once you have two strikes, your third down isn't a down at all. It's an immediate death, and that's what just happened there. They have no support for this fight, relying on the medic as their only sustain. Assault being focused now down to half health. He does not have his personal shield yet. It is on cooldown. Focusing now on the medic. Got him down into that pit of death, Jay Party. That's that tyrant pool down there. They do not want to go too far down in there as the hunters. Yeah, avoid the water, get out of there. There. This monster doing a pretty good job, but his health dropping to half here. With only a minute 15 left on the dropship, they're going to get that support in in a matter of time here. Nice fire damage from Hyde on Assault, and you're seeing the health drop Ooh. drastically, Jay Party. Oh. Focuses the medic, though, medic down to just a sliver, and, and the medic down. goes down as well. No shields as support is still out, so the medic was a squishy target there. Squishy, squishy, and very delishy, <laughs> Jay Party. Look at the trapper shooting through the flames, still knows where the monster is, and that's so important. One of the reasons I really like Maggie over the other trapper is her ability to lay down the harpoon traps and then use that SMG and actually get damage off. Sometimes as the primary trapper, you think you only have to use CC, but damage is important. The Trapper is the secondary damage source for any team, and whenever you get an opportunity, use that SMG. Big time trank from the Medic there. They have the monster slowed down and also visible on the map. You also see birds there. They have a good idea of where he is. Trapper, though, with a big butt of Hyde in the way. He's trying to get around him right now. Right now, having more trouble with Hyde than with the monster. And this is a very interesting spot for the monster. Behind this facility here, there's very little food. This is the edge of the wildlife, and he ends up one short of getting his evolved fur full, and that's going to be rough, as there's not a lot of food all the way around this area. Medic on a single strike there. That could be a prime target right now, Jay Party. As uh, the dropship timer just ended, support will be coming back oh. into the game. Another clutch trank, though, from the Medic. And it comes again. He's got him again with another Trank J Party. Big time Tranks from the Medic. And look at the monster so far away, but visible to the team. Yeah, those are just so annoying as a monster. Reducing your jump height, making your movement slow to a crawl here. And worst of all, it gives the enemies true vision of your movement there. So important to have a solid Medic on those Tranquilizers. Completely Tranked here, J Party. On the run, finally. Trapper on the move here. You're gonna try and get him in another dome. The dome is off cooldown. I would love to see another fight right now, J Party. If they can get him before he, uh, or after he evolves here, this would be a good fight for the Hunters. I love where the Trapper's laying these harpoon traps. If the monster goes for a big leap right through the middle of the map, he could get hooked by one of those traps, and that's going to pull him straight to the ground and stop that jump. Could be beautiful if we see that timing occur. It looks like the monster is going to engage Jay Party here at uh, just before stage two. He does have full armor. It's a great time to engage. Gets focus on support. Ooh. Two strikes on support. That is a good target to go for. He's going on support with the fire. He's trying big time by the medic and he's 
out of the dome day party. Oh. Big time jump, and that's the first dome the Trapper missed. That's a big time miss, though, as the cooldown is pretty massive. And that is too bad. He did exactly like I was talking about. Went for a big leap through the middle of the arena. Unfortunately, he didn't. Oh, and he catches a bunch of Hunters here as a surprise. Thankfully, the assault gets the personal shield off and doesn't take much damage from the pass. That was an unlucky pounce by the monster. He had his choice of targets there, but he engaged with Assault. Assault had his personal shield up, and the rest of the team was able to get him off. This is a rough place to fight, though, for the <laughs> Hunters, Jay Party. This is brutal here. The thin ledges over a sheer cliff is going to be so rough. If a Hunter falls, they're not going to have the jetpack to get back up, and these thin platforms are going to make him group up very easily for big hits from the monster. They're chasing him now. The mobile arena on half oh, of its cooldown there, Jay Party. It's almost back up. They can get him in another dome. This can be big time. He does maybe want to evolve here, Jay Party. What do you think about that? Yeah, interesting decision. His health is getting low, and that health regen perk is gone. There will be no more elite tyrants on this map. So the health he's got now is the health he's sticking with. I think he needs to get to that stage three, rely on the health gain, then get that armor full and go in. This is still anybody's game, but he's getting down penalties on the support classes, particularly the support himself with two strikes and the medic now with one strike. Jay Party, look at the trapper here. The trapper so close to the monster where he's evolving. He's got the dome ready. He needs to throw it, and he sees him, Jay Party. He gets the dome on him, and he's not going to get out. Oh, he oh, does! He's just does. out I of can't it. Even believe wow. He slides out of there. What a leap by the monster. You see it coming down on his back. Too there, little, too late out. by the trapper, Jay Party. Oh, that's rough. He just barely squeaked out of the edge of the arena there, and that is too bad. Another long cooldown, and this is going to give him the space he needs to get that armor up. They're going to need to work real hard hard to stay on him. Force and the fight even though he can run. He gained just over two bars of health there. He's working on armor now. If he can armor up, this would be a good fight for the Monster J Party with support on two strikes, Medic on a strike. Yeah, the Hunters need to be concerned. Their supporting roles, Medic and support, are going to crumble real fast in this fight. Val needs to make sure to keep everyone at max health here to give them as much time as they can. Support not with the team though, Jay Party. It looks like right now we have the Medic, Trapper, and Assault trying to engage along with Daisy. They do get a nice Trank and a Harpoon and a big Orbital Barrage and the Flamethrower on the monster. Jay Party melted his armor all the way down and they're working on his health. Big time hits by the Hunters. Oh, but just like that, the support is out of this game, folks. It's down to the last three Hunters, but they're doing so much damage. And this is the importance of having very good players on the Hunters. It's the damage they output is just so high here as they're shredding through a level three monster here. He's going big time damage on the Hunters here as well, though, and a big time med blast and the uh, med gun shot to the Trapper to keep him in the game. I think he's going to try to run here. The Trapper's got that arena ready, though. They're looking for him to try to run and catch him as he escapes the fight. But it looks like they don't get him here, and he's free to run. They want to catch him now, Jay Party. This is a two-bar of health monster on the ropes here. No armor. They need to catch him down and finish this here. So he kills the support again, but in another minute, he'll be back into this fight. You're going to see him pick on that support at the start of pretty much every round. 50% health support with no real way to protect himself is a juicy target. Oh, but he's going back in on the medic, it looks like. Focus the medic there, did a bit of damage. And this is a rough, another rough spot for the Hunters to fight here, Jay Party. It's hard for them to keep up that jetpack momentum on these big ledges and go up and down. They're doing a good job here, though, keeping the team alive with another med gun use on the Trapper there. And look at the Trapper drawing the aggro, and the Trapper wants it. After the assault, the Trapper is a tanky guy. Oh, but he goes down, still can't get those harpoon traps to stop him from following him. He's up immediately from the medic. Trapper down. Trapper with a down penalty now. That's Trapper with one, Medic with one. Support is out for 23 more seconds. This is the timer on the dropship. You see the Medic still doing a great job with that Trank gun. And this is a good time for the monster to retreat and try to get that armor. With only 15 seconds left, he's not going to be able to wipe the team in time. He needs to let them get the support and get the full strength of their team. He's getting some good progress. Two down penalties on the support, one on the medic, and now one on the trapper that only leaves assault. And you're not going to see him even go for assault. I know this monster. He knows exactly what his plan is, and it is not to go for that assault. Yeah, he's staying away from assault. That's bad news with the big time flamethrower and the personal shield. So like you said, Jay Party, he's going to focus in priority uh, support medic and then the trapper and focus the trapper as a premier premier priority if that dome is up yeah this is a real interesting situation to be in this game could definitely still go to anyone the monster low on health but i think he's got enough to win the fight if he gets the right engage here look for the terrain to be used to someone's advantage here the monster wants to get more wildlife trap wants to get more things to distract the hunters while the hunters want to have a clean wide open area where they can just lay in the dps on the monster the monster focusing on speed rather than grace here jay party is he's 
uh, startled birds multiple times. The hunters have an idea where he is. They have him kind of cornered back here. There he goes after Assault. As we mentioned, he has him pounced, but Assault pops his personal shield. If the rest of the team can get in as they do there, they get him off Assault, and they're back in the fight. <laughs> Assault quite disoriented there. Can't quite figure out which angle the monster's at. But he got, oh, it looks like he slid right outside the arena again. I cannot believe the positioning of these, and they're not going to be able to get shots within this arena. <laughs> Look at the standoff they have here. He cannot penetrate the arena with that rock, and the hunters can't leave here. <laughs> I'm not sure what the plan is here. And there it goes down. We'll see who gets the shot off first, and the monster misses, but he goes for the charge follow-up. Big-time follow-up. He's got the trapper focused here. There's an orbital barrage. He does not want to go in there, J-Party. That's going to melt his armor oh, down, and it does. It. God, he goes for the rock throw in the middle of the barrage. That was a terrible decision. He's got no more armor whatsoever in this fight, and they're tearing into him again. Doing big time damage. They got him under a bar and a half here, and it's melting as it goes. Support is down though, Jay Party. That's the two strike penalty that you face. As soon as you go down, you're out. Support now down and out for the third time. Oh, but everyone keeping up damage so well, and that's what's important. The hunters have what they need to finish him off here. They just can't let him run away. If the monster gets full armor, he'll be back in it, but no, I think they're gonna finish him off here. You Keep see firing, the trapper hunters. on fire using that machine pistol, doing big time damage. They've got him just to a sliver of health. Oh, man, he is oh, on the he run. He ducks around the corner, and I think that's the last shot they're going to get off on him. As <laughs> once again, the monster escapes the fight, but this is a bad spot to be in. We saw in that last exchange, a single orbital barrage consumed his entire armor bar and did a lot of damage to his health as he's going to go for the game winner here, but I think they're going to get to him in time. Yeah, they are too close for him to finish. Look at the energy meter on the power relay, J Party. That's a big time energy bar to dismantle there and he's doing it slowly as the hunters are on the way. Yeah, and with very, he's gonna take about two hits here before he collapses. I don't think this is his fight. He decided not to go with the armor, just went straight in to force the fight here. We'll see what he can pull off. There's Trapper leading the charge as he has this game so far, <laughs> but he gets caught in his own teammate's toxic grenade, and that's gonna slow the team down. Yeah, a rough grenade from their assault class there slows the whole team at the entrance, and we'll see what the monster does here. He's still hiding from the squad, doing a good job here, but he needs to get some armor. There he is, tranked again, Jay Party. His armor is slowly dropping. Doesn't know who to focus here, big time uh, shield. Oh. oh, wow. What a big time finish there. <laughs> Winner, winner, uh, monster dinner. The Goliath goes down. Hunters with the, with the win. That's James on assault, Shaq on the trapper, Ben on the medic, and Nick on support. Jay Party, let's talk about that last match. Oh, man, entertaining game. I liked what the monster did there. Not afraid to engage, and I like that. He made a lot of forward progress, particularly on that support, getting the down penalties on the classes he wanted them on, and that's what made that so strong there. Uh, Jay Party, let's talk about the player of the match there. Uh, at first, my uh, my choice was the Trapper. He got the uh, monster domed so many times at the beginning, but started to slip up in the air in the end there. My pick for the player of the match was the Medic. Relentless tranks the entire time. Kept that monster on the ropes and on the run, slow as can be. Yeah, I like what you're saying there. When I look for an MVP of the match, I want to look for the character that used all of the tools on his kit, and the Medic did a great job there, using the tranks to engage, and then once the fight started, switching that sniper rifle, getting a weak spot or two, and then finally sticking to healing the Medic's real strength. Did a great job. Overall, really well played by the Hunters, particularly on the Medic, I agree. And Jay Party, your turning point in the match there, what do you say? Oh man, it was that one engaged by the monster in the middle of the map where he got the support out, but he wasn't able to focus down the next character. And once that timer got too close, he had to run, but he had taken so much damage in that fight. That was the big turning point. The monster was never able to recover as much momentum after that. His health bar just wasn't high enough for those latter fights in the match. And Jay Party, we have some fun facts here on the mobile arena. Jay Party, did you know that the mobile arena lasts for a minute and recharges for one minute? That's a big time ask by a lot of people out there. They want to know what the cooldown on that arena is. The mobile arena lasts for a minute and its cooldown is for a minute. Also, Jay Party, the mobile arena has a radius of 60 meters. So it's possible to catch a monster before it can even sense your presence, unless you're Shaq in the end of that game. The mobile arena takes four seconds from the time it comes out to the time it interlocks the barrier, which sometimes is enough for a monster to escape if poorly thrown. Also seen in that last game at the end. 
When the arena has 10 seconds left, Jay Party, uh, with the monster inside, the trapper will actually say a line of VO that alerts the team as well as the monster that the dome is coming down. And Jay Party, last fact on the mobile arena here. If the trapper becomes incapacitated, the mobile arena will be deactivated. This makes the trapper a potential target for the monster, as we've seen in so many games. Wow, great facts, DB. Thanks for those, and thanks TRS for providing those facts to us. I didn't know everything there was to know. I'm loving these questions from the viewers out there, as we're learning a lot, too, as I realize there's a lot of depth to the game I was not aware of. Jay Party, let's go ahead and kick it off with our next Trapper player. We're switching it up here. Uh, we've got some new kids on the sticks, on the hunters, and on the monster as well. We're going to see a new monster. Jay Party, go ahead and take us out with the Trapper. Yeah, switching it up here. The monster you just saw in that last game is now going to be on the Trapper. And we're going to see a different Trapper here, Griffin, the more active Trapper and with more late-game scouting potential. Instead of Daisy the Trap Dog, this Trapper relies on sound spikes, and I love these. In a small arena around them, they detect all movement from the monster. So what this gives the team is a lot of late-game potential. Once they've moved across the map, laid a bunch of sound spikes at the key choke points, there's very few spots the monster can hide, and that's why I love this Trapper. His harpoon gun is an active weapon. This requires him to actually equip it and fire it into the monster, both giving you better precision and accuracy, but forcing him to use it as a primary weapon and removing him as a damage source on the team. I'm excited to see Griffin here as we focus in on the Trapper for match two, which is just getting underway. Also worth noting, you picked the health regen perk, and I like that perk right now. It's very strong, and if a monster is not good at focusing a target down, you're going to regain so much life through a fight with that perk that it's going to mitigate even more damage in the damage reduction. And that's why I love having that health regen perk, particularly on a person like the Trapper, who probably won't draw a concentrated aggro. Jay Party, we've got Ben on the monster, James on assault, Scott on the Trapper, Nick on the medic, and Shaq on support. We saw some good support play from Shaq last week. Let's see if he steps it up after that disappointing last match. All right, Shaq. When the monster brings the fight, use the submachine gun to do some damage. The strength of the Trapper class is the ability to contain the monster and force the fight. Deploying the mobile arena is critical to your team's success. Hold the equip button to take the mobile arena down. All right, here we go, Jay Party. Game two on the episode two Trapper feature grudge match. And the monster going with Krakionis, as they yeah, like to say. and a new monster. The whole shoe on the monster, and I love this guy. His primary role is Medic. Man, does he love Medic, and boy, he is good at it. We'll see if he performs on the Kraken here. He knows the annoyances that the Kraken has with the Medic, so we'll see if he can avoid those. They're not running Val. It's worth noting they're running Lazarus on this team. They're going for the Revive comp, and that's a great composition against the Kraken. He really has high-impact moves that take out Hunters quickly, and Lazarus is going to counter that so well by being able to revive those teammates. And with... Uh Assault, they're going with Markov. As we mentioned last week uh, in the Kraken matches we saw there, Markov has big time range with that lightning gun that's going to work well against the Kraken. But finally, back to our featured hunter here, Griffin the Trapper, already laying those sound spikes out. And you see on the mini-map in the middle of your screen, it shows you the area of the sound spike that allows you to place them optimally for most coverage you possibly can here. And that's going to give him the most late game potential in detecting where the monster moves across the map. 60 meter radius, Jay Party, as we just learned. Yeah, great tools right there. They also do project vertically. I saw that was a note in one of the things. It's not a circular projection. It will catch the Kraken even high in the air if he crosses that barrier. It is a vertical, cylindrical projection of the sound spike. Kraken going to get an increased movement speed perk here, Jay Party. That's huge here in the beginning of the game, especially with that Kraken. He's got that flight. He might be able to juke the Trapper, as we saw in the end game of that last match, and get out of the dome in time. But right now, they are engaging, and support is already Pretty big time low on health. I love what the Trapper's doing here. It's keeping a distance from the rest of the team, looking for the monster to try to escape, and then he can catch him. As the Trapper hasn't deployed the arena, but there it goes down, and this is a huge environment. They're gonna need to pull the Kraken to the ground if they want any hope of getting any damage off. Big time lightning strike on Griffin there. Griffin down to just a bit of health. If he goes down, the mobile arena comes down as well. 
and he is on the run. The Kraken is focusing him. You've seen uh, those ranged abilities being used, and that's big time damage, but you see the health burst there from the medic. Clutch timing, oh, but, but the trapper him. goes down. Wow, precision strikes from the Kraken, and that's such a brutal exchange. They catch a level one monster, and all they get from it is a knockdown trapper. So well played by the Kraken here, utilizing those abilities to the strength. As it looks like he went full lightning strike at level one here, only has one ability, and boy, does it hit hard. Nice engagement by the monster, but they do have Lazarus on the hunter team, so no loss to health there, no down penalties. Lazarus got the player up with the Lazarus device. The trapper's right back in the game here, and that cooldown, though, on the mobile arena, it's a tough thing to look at when you're trying to get the monster trapped here early on, but the monster's on stage two. Diver diversifying that move portfolio here at stage two, taking one point in the rest of his abilities. Now this gives him some tools to work with the environment and hopefully clear the wildlife quicker, as he's doing a great job here. This monster looking great going into this match. He is on the run here, and you see the evolve meter filling up quickly. Trapper on the move here. Griffin has those sound spikes. He does not have Daisy like we saw in the last match, so he is going to rely on his instincts and on those sound spikes, laying those down. And you see the monster as well, Starling Birds. It's another thing to look out for, and the Trapper sees him here. We're noting those hunters pick up a elite perk there, and that is the reload and switch weapons perk, and that's so useful, allowing you to utilize all your abilities so much quicker as a hunter with that perk. Big time dome and harpoon by the Trapper. He's got him here. And they lost him, though. How nice did they, move. I can't believe they lost him there. Just barely ducked around him here. And you're going to see him deploy a sound spike probably in the middle of this arena. And that's so important here. That's going to allow them to detect the monster, even though he's near them in this fight arena here. There you go. They got vision, and they're going to need it. He's doing such a good job of hiding in the trees here. Sound spike is up. As you can see, the monster ticking away there. Seen by the hunters. It's that red icon that's up in the air there and he's gonna be constantly tracked while he's in this mobile arena. This can be so hard as a hunter here as you're trying to pull the monster to the ground. Oh, and he gets it, finally gets a thing in his back. Oh, but he's able to break it still. They just cannot keep this monster harpoon. He's doing such a good job of looking for the source of those harpoon traps and just taking the hunters down. Big time hit on the trapper again with the lightning strike, trying to take him down here. Aftershock comes in, but it misses. Man. Oh, this... it gets him down. That is assault down on the ground. But look, he's right into those sentry guns, Jay Party. That's a tough place to fight. Yeah, this monster, though, crushing through these hunters, doing such a good job. Oh, and they're clustered. Oh, and the lightning gets another one down here. That's Trapper again, Jay Party. If the medic can get him, though, he will get him up with no down penalty, as we mentioned before. But right now, the monster is relentless on that body, working on Assault now. Assault has to pop his personal shield to be safe. Lucky for this team, they do have Lazarus, and he is what's keeping them in this fight here. The down penalties would have already crippled this team if they had Val. Lucky for them, though, they have the right medic for the situation, and so far, this monster has just been schooling the hunters. Medic being focused now. If he can get Lazarus down, that's going to be a big time hit on this hunter team as they will not be able to get the other teammates up without down penalties. Halfway to health here and he's getting hit by the Hunter team. Oh, and such good play by them. The support using his cloak to get the Medic out of there as the Medic's cloak was just used in that last fight. Absolutely great team play by the support. That was a big play that matters. Oh, but Nicely another done. Another lightning strike out of the cloak nails Medic. This monster is incredible right now. Medic is down. That is going to be a strike on the Medic as he cannot res himself with that Lazarus device. Medic is finally back up. They're <laughs> on the chase here. Nice harpoons by the Griffin. And absolutely relentless with those harpoons. Oh, but he misses a key one there. And this might be the distance the monster needs to dodge. And he does. He's too far away to get hit by another harpoon trap. But well played by the hunters there. That trapper keeping the monster in that fight much longer than he wanted to. That's right, Jay Party. The monster down to just about half health now. It was a good fight for the monster at first, but then it turned into a good fight for the hunters. The hunters only suffering the one down penalty on the medic, and they know exactly where he is, Jay Party. These guys are relentless in their approach. Yeah, but that one down penalty is going to come in big there. The medic is the backbone of this revive comp, and with very little protecting him, they do not have Hank on support. They're relying on offensive support from Bucket. These down penalties are going to matter so much, as if Lazarus gets targeted and quickly, he's going to just evaporate in these fights. Bucket used his UAV there, Jay Party, and he was able to track the monster. The monster now tracked and visible to the team with that red icon in the middle of the screen there. And the hunters are on the move, looking to catch him in that back area. Oh, man, and they're not quite close enough here, but thankfully they have that true tracking. As look, at he's setting off a sound spike, getting detected by birds and tracked by the UAV right now. There's not a lot of places to hide as this monster. 
And the Trapper here, not a lot of jetpack fuel to work with, but as you can see, he's doing a good job of vaulting over the sides there and pushing up against the wall and using that jetpack button to get up the wall. And look, here's the Monster J Party ready to evolve. Quick note about jetpacks, too, for the users at home who haven't played much. Even if you are out of fuel, continue to hold the jetpack button and just mash your face into the wall. It will climb even without fuel as long as you're up against a surface. And that's so important for climbing large gaps and getting up high elevation, even without jetpack fuel. Look at that, Jay Party. That's an elite tyrant. You that can tell everyone is making take. note of that in this game right now. Such a big perk. Also a big perk, even on the Hunters. That would give them health regen as well. You're going to see some territorial fighting for that, I think, as no one wants to let that just sit unchecked. Monster on the move. Monster startles birds. They realize that they're in the opposite direction. It looks like they might be able to cut them off here. You see the Banshee Bites coming in on the Trapper, focusing Assault. Assault down to just a bit of health. Aftershock misses, though, Jay Party. Assault doing well, but they are playing dangerously near to that tyrant pool. Yeah, that aftershock missing was big as the assault is able to stay back in this fight. Gets a big heal burst from the medic and they're back on the aggression here. Back on the aggression and melting that armor down. The trapper doing nicely with, <laughs> oh, the trapper takes a Knocked big hit the to the face. Wow, knocks so far. It's gonna take him a couple seconds to get back in this fight. That was a great catch by the Kraken here. Just getting rid of the CC, pushing them away from him. He can kind of hide in these trees and I do not, oh, but they get tyranted there and that's what they need to watch out for. The tyrant making big plays for the monster. That's support in the tyrant. They got him out now and they're working on the tyrant now, Jay Party. Oh, uh, no, that's the assault in the tyrant now. If they can get him out of there and get this tyrant down as he is now, they're going to be able to pick up that health regeneration perk that you talked about. Yeah, this is going to be difficult, though. They're going to need to guard that body until the meat deteriorates. Things slowly rot, but they can't hasten the process here, and they're going to need to fight, fend off the monster in the meantime. The monster can pick up that perk, which is what you're alluding to there, and he would be right back in the game with that health regen. And the medic and the team here running in, trying to get the monster trapped in another dome. But as you can see, the dome is on full cooldown right now. And look at the hunters here. They don't want to leave this area. They're a little reluctant. They know the high value of this target. And also the Kraken still lurking around here, trying to find an angle in on this hunter. And uh, we look like uh, support there is putting sentry guns around the body. That's a nice move to try and fend the monster off of there. So you can see the monster is on the run. Yeah, important to note the monster cannot eat or destroy any object while he's being shot. So those turrets will prevent him from eating the meat until he removes them. And that's going to hopefully give the hunters enough time as they have him just so well tracked right now on this map. The monster in another sound spike area there, Jay Party. He is being tracked. Here comes the, uh, I thought the mobile arena is becoming, but it's still on cooldown. They've got him while he's evolving, Jay Party. This is a big time catch for the hunters. He is definitely vulnerable here. Oh, but the trapper going in so deep with no support here. Finally, the rest of the team shows up, and there's that big support cloak, but support takes a giant lightning strike, and they have to watch out. They're just so clustered here. Big time harpoon from the trapper to lock the monster down. His uh, mobile arena is ready. He gets it down, Jay Party, oh, but he could go down as well. A bad decision by the trapper, as that is now on cooldown, and it was brought down because he went down. A terrible decision, as even if they get him back in this fight, they're going to have no CC for a while. Trapper is down on the ground. He's trying to finish him off, camping the body, as well as doing damage to the rest of the team. Hits support with a big time lightning strike, trying to take him down now. This could be a huge hit to the hunters, and he's getting him up. Oh, and the medic can't get in. Yep. Oh, and the medic blows it there. His smoke wears off, and now he's detected with such low health, and medic is down. Oh, and the medic goes down, Jay Party. This is going to be two strikes <laughs> and a strike for the Trapper as well. The Trapper is down and out, waiting for the dropship, camping the entire team now, and it's up to the assault here and support to try and get back in this game. Oh, and the Hunters are not happy with that decision there. The Medic thought he could get the revive off in time, but he doesn't, and now they're both dead. Relying on their assault to get big damage. They do have the primary damage dealers in this fight with the offensive bucket support. He's going to have a lot of firepower with those turrets. No shield, though, as that's on cooldown as well for Assault. No, assault, assault goes down bad. as well. It's up to support, and support uses that cloak. He needs to get out of here. Cloak is off a of cooldown. He's trying to finish this himself. This is 1v1, Jay Party. Big time damage to the monster. But And look at this uh, support with the full bar of health. Oh, and the Kraken can target him from up high. What a good decision here. Oh, and he nails him with it. But he's got more health to work with here as he needs to make sure he has those turrets out. Oh, but the it monster comes down on him. That's the aftershock ability, and that's going to end it here, Jay Party. Winner, winner, <laughs> hunter dinner. That's a big time win. For the hunter or for the monster there, finishes off the team. <laughs> wow.
Oh, man, well played by the Kraken there. That last big mistake, definitely the play of the game there. The Medic thinks he can get the revive off in time, but he doesn't. Aftershock connects just a second before that, kills the down teammate, and takes down the Medic. Absolutely the crushing play of the game from the Kraken. Two clutch mistakes by the Hunter Team J party. The first one you pointed out was popping that mobile arena with just a sliver of health. He's immediately down, which means the arena doesn't even have a chance to show up. It's just gone and immediately on cooldown. And then, as you mentioned, the medic goes in, tries to save the day. Bad timing. The big thing with Lazarus is you need to be patient. You don't need to rush in there. He was clearly camping those bodies with that big lightning strike and waiting for them to make that mistake. They made it, and the team fell. Yeah, rough game, but really, that Kraken looked great from the beginning there. Absolutely in control of those fights from the start, and you could just tell in his play he felt confident there. He knew he could handle the Hunters, and he did a great job of just systematically destroying them in that fight. Just such a big catch there. Fighting near Tyrant Pits, I like that a lot. Relying on nature as his ally. Make, if the Hunters make a mistake, they're instantly punished by that Tyrant. As we saw in an earlier fight, they didn't even get to fight the Kraken. They just dealt with that elite Tyrant the entire time. Crushing victory by Ben on the Kraken. That guy is good at video games. He is. I've played video games with him before. He knows how to play them. Jay Party, let's go ahead and get into some facts on Griffin. Jay Party, did you know that sound sensors can detect the monster's movement within a 50-meter radius? We saw that come into play in that match there. They were throwing down the sound sensors early on in the dome. They were able to see where he was because at first they were having a hard time of keeping uh, what direction he was in and focusing on the monster. Jay Party, if you are uncertain of just how far you are from a sensor, you can actually look at the sensor. It has an active uh, distance meter on there that's going to tell you how far away you are from the closest sensor. Another fact about Griffin is that Griffin's submachine gun normally holds 36 bullets per clip and has a very low kickback. That means you can go all in on that wildlife, take them out, pick up those perks, or go in on the monster and finish off a fight like we saw in these last couple fights here. And finally, uh, Jay Party, two more facts on Griffin. The harpoon gun has a range of 40 meters. That's huge range on that thing. You're able to bring that monster to you if you can get him on there, bring him down to the ground do big time damage. Talk about how we've seen that uh, harpoon gun come yeah. into play in that last fight. Just wanted to mention that last fight too, we saw that maximum range being achieved there on the edge of the arena. The trapper missed that key harpoon that was trying to slow the monster down and that's what let him get away. He must have been right on the edge of that range, probably around 50 meters and that was such a big play in that last game. So Jay Party, this is a fact that I did not know about the harpoon gun. This is down to that crazy data that the experts at TRS uh, have the knowledge bank lock on. The harpoon gun does not apply resistance to the monster's movement if you're in the air while connected. Meaning that if he doesn't knock that off, he's going to drag you around like you're trying to walk a big uh, St. Bernard or something like that. It only applies resistance while you're on the ground. So take note of that, monster players out there. Use that trapper like your favorite balloon, or kite for that matter, and drag him around the map like the doll that he is. Jay Party, let's get back into the uh, matches here. We're going to go into game three. We're going to have more trapper action for you. We've got James on the assault, Scott on trapper, Ben on medic, and Nick on support. And ladies and gentlemen, as requested by almost unanimous requests out there, you got your boy Shaq on the monster. So that's going to make everybody out in the audience uh very excited, I'm sure, Jay Party. A lot of pride on the line here as Shaq obliterated these hunters the first week of our broadcast here. So hopefully they get some revenge here. Maybe they can take one game off Shaq. And quick, worth noting, uh, our hunter composition. So you see that the assault and the trapper are going to stay uh, to what they played in that last match. Confidence there in their abilities. But when we get down uh, to support and the medic, they switched up the medic. They like that medic play from Ben, the first game with the Tranks, and not so much that big-time Lazarus mistake in the last match, Nick is relegated to support in this match. Let's see if he can make up for the uh, previous mistake. And this is such a strong comp, the beam comp, healing it, shielding it, and shooting those harpoon beams. There's just so many beams to look out for here, folks, as we're jumping right into this game with a short trapper tutorial, and we'll be with you shortly. And traps the monster. Sound spikes can detect a nearby monster. An icon will appear on the HUD. Hold the fire button to stop the monster's movement with the harpoon gun. When the monster brings the fight, use the submachine gun to do some damage. The strength of the Trapper class is the ability to contain the monster and force the fight. 
deploying the mobile arena is critical to your team's success. Hold the equip button to take the mobile arena down. Jay Party, we're jumping right into the game here. Game three, Shaq on the monster, Goliath at the fusion plant. Yeah, the classic matchup here, Goliath versus the starting hunter set. And this is definitely a grudge match from a couple weeks ago. We'll see what they change here. As Shaq is starting off with a strong sneak start, not going for distance, going for stealth play here. He wants to confuse the hunters. So as we watch them drop out of the ship here, let's see how quickly they find their bearings as Shaq's going to be relying on them slow, going slowly and being a little confused at the start here. Trapper going to lead the charge out of the drop ship. As you mentioned, we've got Markov on assault, Griffin on Trapper, Val on Medic and Hank on support. And they are on the move here. This is a good team to fight this Goliath. Yeah, I call this the beam comp there, as everything is targetable, everything is a projection. Very little in the way of static defenses, as they're gonna rely on shielding each other, healing each other, and targeting those harpoons properly to give this assault the room he needs to fire that lightning gun off. Go beam team, on the move here, you're seeing more sneak and smells from the monster. This is that big time advanced play that we talk about, moving around the map, seeing what's around you, eating those creatures, and filling up that Unfortunately for Shaq, it looks like he startled a bird there and didn't know. He's kind of wasting some time using that sneak when they already know exactly where he is here. Oh, but he gets that movement speed, and this is that strong starting bird we saw last match. An initial movement speed burst is so big on the monster, it gives him room to maneuver. Oh, but they catch him in a quick arena here. We'll yeah. see if the monster can take out the Trapper before the rest of the team catches up. Trapper gets the dome down. He's on the run here. And here comes the beam team. They've got him at that shield. They've got the monster trapped here. Monster sneak attacking some wildlife, building up that armor. This is going to be a good fight, Jay Party. Full armor, full health with the monster. The hunters, as you can see, the trapper laying down that sound spike. If the monster's not sneaking, they're going to be able to see where he is in the dome. Yeah, the mid-combat sound spike such an important nuance of advanced play. It allows you to keep track of the monster while he's in the arena, and that's what's so important here. He can't juke and dodge and, dodge and hide between rocks as long as that sound spike is detecting him. Juking and dodging, Jay Party. I like that. That's a new one word I'm going to use as often as I can because it rhymes with dodge. It does. It does rhyme with dodge. Thank you for that, DB. As this monster just doing an incredible job here of playing the hiding game, a very different approach here from the first match as we saw a very aggressive monster. And now we're seeing the most passive monster yet as he's finally forced to engage here. And look at the Trapper doing a great job just hovering in front of him like dangling fruit in front of his face here, but he can't quite snatch it. And the monster gonna go on the run. He's on the run already. He used that entire mobile arena to sneak around undetected. But the medic with some clutch tranks here, keeping the monster visible for the team. Unfortunately, you see him there just out of range. Looks like he's over 40 meters away, Trapper, as he cannot connect with that harpoon gun. I love it, Jay Party. Using the facts that we learned today in the stream, <laughs> you are definitely a student of this Utilizing game. Utilizing what we learned together, it's kind of awesome here. I can't believe how much more I'm learning about the game just from the questions people were asking on the forums. It was actually pretty awesome. Yeah, speaking of those questions, Jay Party, we are going to feature the questions that we like the most at the end of the stream here. In the meantime, though, Monster on the run, trying to build up that Evolve meter, but tranked again by the Medic. That insult trank coming from across the map there, and I love that. Val, just such a cool Medic. Those tranquilizers just cannot be underestimated there, as they're such strong tools. Slowing movement, giving the team detection, so important for this whole team's functionality. Monster on the run, using that Sneak Pounce to take out the wildlife, undetected there. And you see in the Trapper here leading the charge. They need to get him in the dome, and they need to find him while he's in there. You've seen the mini map pop up with the trapper there are two sound spikes laying over the map there you see jay party that they're edge to edge which means that if the monster runs through that the monster will be detected and look how much ground they're covering with those three sound spikes having them edge to edge like that they're getting the most bang for their buck with the sound spikes yeah you can absolutely tell this is also one of the smaller maps we're going to be playing on and those sound spikes covering a huge amount of distance here it's going to be so hard for this monster to lurk anywhere without being easily detected by the hunters not only are are they covering a massive area? They are also covering the majority of the entrances and exits to the forest in the back and the area where you see the monster now. 
but still using that sneak ability, and that's what's keeping this monster in this fight. He will not be detected, nor will he leave footprints while he's sneaking, and he's doing a great job here of hiding from these hunters. He is, Jay Parton. He is evolving to stage two. On the run for so long at stage one, he's going to spend three more points here. Let's see where he spends them, Jay Party. Talk about the points here in the Evolve with the Goliath. This is a real interesting build. I don't think I've seen before here. Ignoring the Rock Throw altogether and only one point in the Fire Breath, which means he's relying on his movement modifiers as his damage source. The Charge and the Leap Smash are going to be his biggest hitting moves with Charge coming in first with all three points in it already. He does not want to be on the Rock Throwing end of that Rock standoff as we saw in the first match, Jay Party. He wants to bring the pain with the other abilities that charge, leap, and fire breath. And here he is using his abilities on that Crowbill Sloth. It's an elite Crowbill Sloth, oh, and, and that's going to be a big time damage output perk, Jay Party. And what I want to mention there, the important part of that engagement with that Sloth is he didn't waste time meleeing it. He used all of his abilities to kill it quickly. Yeah, you're just using his melee to finish it off, and that's so important there. Maximize your damage, reduce time spent farming, and just get the kills, as this is going to be a rough fight for the Hunters. Even at Stage 2 here, with most of his armor and that damage bonus, he's going to be hitting real hard. So are the Hunters, though, Jay Party, with that Lightning Gun and the Trapper here using that... Uh, well, he's getting battered around <laughs> now, though. The monster might want to try and take him out, but look at these Harpoons. Nicely done by the Trapper. And that's the ideal Harpoons you want there. Catch him as he's jumping. As he's about to use a move, he will not be able to break those traps easily. Jay Party, many people ask me where the handle Poon Trank Dome came from. This is where it came from right here. The big time dome, the big time medic tranks, and the harpoon from the trappers. You're seeing it again. It uh -oh. didn't do enough there, though, Jay Party, as the charge attack takes down the medic. Yeah, that was a really rough exchange there. The support tried to have the shield gun on him, but it looked like something just blocked his line of sight for a second there, allowing the monster to take the medic down, as this fight's looking horrendous for the hunters. Another harpoon in the back, but it's not enough, and down goes support. Medic waiting for the dropship, a minute 52. Support down as well. Unless the teammate can get him up, he's going to be waiting on the dropship as well. Uh -oh. He does have his cloak popped, though, Jay Party. So they, oh, no, they don't get him up. The monster is relentless, and down goes Assault. And this fight already atrocious here. It's down to the Trapper to run away, which is definitely not the Trapper's forte here, as he's got no cloak and no dodging abilities and scrambling for his life, as there's very little he can do to escape Big this time hits from the monster. One more hit should do it, Jay Party. Let's see how he finishes this. And he does it with a melee attack and a charge. Winner, winner, hunter, dinner. Shaq with the win the on the terror. monster. Shaq continuing wow. his victory spree here as he makes the Hunters look bad in that game. If the Hunters could see how he is reacting, they would feel <laughs> even worse, Jay Party. <laughs> All right, Jay Party. Oh, Let's man. talk about that match. So clearly, the player of the match is the monster. Yeah, the monster did such a good job here. And it was worth noting, we could hear the hunters here talking. I don't think they knew he had the damage bonus there when they went in on a stage two, expecting a lot less output. But that level three charge crushed right through them as he was able to hit multiple hunters with that damage bonus, and he just laid waste to them. Yeah, it really made up the difference for the clutch harpoons there by the trapper. The trapper was hitting them very nicely. I would say that the trapper was probably the player of the, the hunter team there in that match, but it wasn't enough. The monster just crushed. Crushed. Yeah, another aspect worth noting there, they were fighting around like a small pillar, and that blocked a lot of line of sight, and this is the beam team, as we've named them. They're reliant on that line of sight, because they have to continually shield, continually heal, and continually apply the harpoon traps to the monster, and they just couldn't do it there. Losing too much yeah. line of sight, getting batted around too much by the Goliath, and they just crumbled. That's right, Jay Party. And I mentioned during the match, but it's worth noting, the turning point in that match was the monster using all of his abilities, cycling through them on that Crowbill Sloth, that elite Crowbill Sloth, taking them down as quickly as possible before the Hunter team got there. As you notice, they got there right after he picked up the perk. So if he had wasted his time meleeing, it would have been game over. He wouldn't have picked it up. And ladies and gentlemen, so what we have here now are Maggie and Daisy facts. So Jay Party, harpoon traps have a reach of 20 meters. Those are those traps that you shoot in to the ground. And five is the maximum number of traps you can have active at any one point in time. So you can have five 20 meter harpoon traps. That's big. Also, Jay Party, Daisy can sniff out stealth tracks. So what you're seeing there, when Daisy slows down and has her nose to the ground, she is sniffing the monster out. But if the monster is near, she will directly cut a path to his uh, presence. Daisy also counts, as we mentioned, 
earlier as a member of the team and will help revive allies, if possible, or keep the game going if she's the last member alive. And finally, Maggie's machine pistol has a high recoil, but can be more accurate on the first few shots. So anybody out there familiar with uh, firearms, you know you want to burst fire that machine pistol. That is going to have your greatest impact and greatest success of fi uh, firing on the uh, monster or on the wildlife. And one thing I wanted to make note of, too, there is a five harpoon trap limit, but when you put your sixth one down, that's going to remove the first trap, as there is no ammo restrictions in Evolve. It's just based on reload time. And another fun fact I read as I was looking through these answers was Daisy can lose the monster completely if he's hiding in water and never allows his tracks to be placed on dry land. Nicely done. You may have spoiled one of our questions for later, oh. but that's okay, Jay Party. Nailed We're it. rolling with it here. We are live <laughs> and direct. Uh, we've got a new Hunter squad. We're going to jump right in. Jay Party, go ahead and uh, talk about the Trapper. It's going to be played by Ben this round. It looks like he's going with Maggie. Yeah, and going back to Maggie here, they're going to switch off again. They're relying on those harpoon traps, and I love Maggie. I can't say enough how much I like being able to set the traps down and then become a damage source for your team using that SMG to actually hit the monster and hope help tear through that huge health bar. Once again, as you just heard a lot of fun facts about Maggie, she's come in so many times as the clutch player on a team, getting the revives when the other teammates can't quite reach it, as she is just so helpful as just having a distraction in these fights, another target for the monster to deal with. Jay Party, we've got James on the monster. Nick on Assault, that's where he thrives, Jay Party, so I want to see a big time play out of him. He's feeling it, man. 0 for 2 in the last uh, 2 there. Feeling the pressure. Needs to bring, bring big time damage. He's got with Hyde in this match, so this should be pretty good. We have Nick on the Trapper, or excuse me, Ben on the Trapper, Scott on the Medic, and Shaq again on Support. The machine pistol has a wide spread, but deals significant damage in a firefight. Harpoon traps can be placed on the ground to limit a monster's mobility, allowing teammates to deal extra damage and escape from danger. Daisy, the pet trap jaw, sniffs out the monster and its tracks, leading the team to combat more quickly. She will also try to revive incapped players. All right, folks, and we are just finishing up these tutorials here, and this game is just to get underway here as we are seeing Slavin, James Slavin himself here on the Kraken. We'll see what he can pull off here as he's had some impressive games in the past. James on the Kraken. We've got Nick on Assault, Ben on the Trapper, Scott on the Medic, and Shaq on Support. The monster on the run. We're seeing the Dropship and the Hunters. Nice crew here, Jay Party. We've got Hyde on Assault, Maggie and Daisy on the Trapper, Lazarus and Hank. That's a nice combination. Yeah, worth noting here, I love switching it up to Laz here, but giving him Hank as the support class. Hank is a defensive-based support, and that's what's needed on this team here, as Lazarus is just going to draw so much attention from the monster. You need that shield beam to keep him into the fight, and you need that, that orbital barrage to really drive the monster away and have a huge damage threat if there's contention over a certain area. Team jumping in, Daisy plummeting to the ground. Finally, her chute opens, and she's down with the rest of the team. They're on the move here. They do see footprints right away, and they are tracking the monster, what looks like to the forest area in the back. Strong start here in the first couple seconds can decide the whole match as they immediately catch the trail of the monster. No surprises here. They know exactly where he went into this back swamp area, one of the richest areas for wildlife on the map. There's so many opportunities for a diverse set of creatures, which gives you a lot of potential for elite perks, and that's what the monster is looking for early on in this fight. Daisy on the run here, leading the charge, showing the team the direction of the monster the monster here otherwise on the edge of the map this is a nice spot for him to maneuver there's a few exits out of here jay party yeah you see him sliding through the startled birds there while he's in sneak he will not set those off and that's what's important to him here they don't know exactly where he is they know the general area but they haven't spotted him yet and he's doing a great job here oh it looks like they do get eyes of him as they throw that that barrage down immediately just to threaten him and try to get some damage off Big time orbital barrage. It pushes him out of where he was, but does no damage. And he's on the run again. You're seeing the medic using that silent sniper rifle to paint some weak points on the monster. If he's hit by any of these projectile weapons, he's going to take extra damage. 
Yeah, the Trapper unfortunately falling behind in that fight as the monster did a great job of juking right by them. Flies over the support and goes to freedom. The center of this map, so wide open, so much verticality. It's just difficult as a hunter to keep up with the Kraken, who can so easily and cleanly fly over large gaps like that. Worth noting that the Trapper didn't use his mobile arena, so the only good thing to come out of that miss on the monster is that they have the mobile arena ready now. You're seeing the monster here on a three meat snack, collecting the increased movement perk just in time as the rest of the team here comes in big time lightning strike hits support support down to half health and that was too bad there once again a game of seconds as support fires a shot off just after the monster gets the one bite he needs to get that perk he now has five minutes of increased movement speed and we'll see how well he can capitalize who has an elite crow build contains the damage bonus one of these teams wants some of that five minutes of perk is gonna be wasted in this arena here Jay party so a good catch by the mo our hunters to finally get him in the arena but they've lost him now and he's hiding again. I can't believe what he's pulling off Trap here. Out. Ducking behind rocks seemingly in just obvious positions, but the hunter's completely Trap flabbergasted out. by this. They cannot find him as this arena is over halfway over. And that's one thing to note about not using Griffin here. They're not able to put down the sound spikes. They finally find him, but that might not be the find you want right now, Jay Party. A big time lightning strike hits, followed by the vortex. He separates the team now. He can take his pick and he focuses on the medic. And that's what's so important here. Luckily for Lazarus, he has that personal cloak, the only medic that does, and the heat allows him to disappear in this fight and escape without taking much damage. Monster doing a great job of getting away from the team, keeping his distance, able to do those ranged attacks. Gets another nice vortex on the medic there, knocks him away, and down goes the arena. He's free to move now, Jay Party. But that's a big time lightning strike he tries to hit. <laughs> Perfect shield by Hank there, mitigates all the damage from the lightning strike. And this medic still at just about full health here, as this fight is going well for the hunters. Assault going in with that flamethrower doing big time damage. If they can get him down to Assault's level, they're gonna do massive damage with that flamethrower. And look at those harpoons. They are locking the monster in place. They're finally doing damage to his armor. Look at that, Jay Party. He went from full armor, full health to half armor, just like that. Such good play by the Trapper. I love what he's doing, putting the harpoon traps on the edges of the cliffs. He knows that's where the Kraken's gonna be flying near. And if one of those hits for a couple seconds, it'll pull the Kraken straight to the ground. Such good positioning there, dotting the edges of the high elevated areas. I love what he did in that fight. That said though, he is still with armor, which means no permanent hit to his health. And he's snacking at his leisure now, working on that evolve meter. A two meat treat or a three meat snack should fill that right up and it'll be ready to evolve. And just like that, the rain comes down and with that comes in some fog as that's gonna block a lot of vision and that's not what you need against the Kraken. As you're gonna be relying on just visually seeing him there is the greatest tool you have of fighting him. Talk about greatest tools, Jay Party. He just picked up ability cooldown. Oh. What a perk to get as the monster. My favorite. I do enjoy this perk even more than the damage bonus. I think being able to fire those moves off twice as often is so important, particularly lightning strike as you see his two move builds going into level two here. And this is a great move. He knows he's going to have the cooldown reduction, which means you actually can't sustain all four moves at the same time with the cooldowns that short. But with two abilities, he will have more than enough to cast here, allowing him to just constantly pelt the hunters with lightning strikes. Has a bit of armor there to work with finally as he gets a little snack in his belly and he's got that ability to cool down and those two massive damage dealing ranged abilities. They do have him on a harpoon though. He is being pinged on the map. You're seeing those red pings. That's the trapper showing the team where he is. Getting those traps down with the harpoons up in the uh, elevated areas of the map to try and get the Kraken down to them. Yeah, he misses that first lightning strike in this fight, and that was a big break for the Hunters as they were quite clustered, but they don't get any damage. But here comes another one. Oh, it misses again here, and he's over two on the lightning strikes. A rough spot to be in as a Kraken. That was a big time dodge by the medic there. He used that jetpack burst to fly forward and get out of range of that. Here comes the orbital barrage. That's hitting Jay Party the monster now, finally taking damage to his health. Yeah, but he connects with that lightning strike, finally hitting the medic and the assault there, getting some health bars down, as he's having a hard time spotting who's who in this cloak field. Fortunately for him, that is wearing off now, and he's gonna have true sight of all these hunters. Oh. Big time lightning strike comes in and hits. There was a personal shield up. It does take that down a bit, and now he's being shielded by uh, Hank on support. Medic focus, medic with a big hit. There's that blue beam shielding the medic. That blue bar means he cannot take damage until he is worn through that shield there. And we'll see how fast he can wear it down. Ooh, as he knocks back the support, but a heal burst keeps him in it. And the oh, medic just another shield. away by the skin of his teeth, but it's not enough as he goes down. 
That's a strike for the Medic, but the rest of the team are hanging in there very strong, Jay Party. No down penalties on anybody else. It was actually a really good fight for the Hunters. Yeah, they get two and a half bars of damage on the monster, but he gets last down. I think that's a pretty even exchange if I'm saying so. Both teams still pretty strong here. The monster gets some room to breathe as he can hopefully go eat up and get some armor before this next engage there. He needs to stop fighting with no armor. I feel like the Hunters were a little disappointed in that fight, but there's no reason to be. They hung in there well, and they've got him again here, Jay Party. A nice toxic grenade slows the monster down, deals damage, and they're already melting off that bit of armor that he just picked up. You see him on fire there from the flamethrower. That means Hyde's getting up in his grill and using that short-range massive damage ability. Yeah, he caught the medic at the edge of that fight there, already below half health with the strike penalty. Last needs to be extra careful here and stick back away from the rest of the Hunters. He cannot engage again like that. If if he gets caught by another ability, he's going to be out of this fight. Here is the Trapper leading the charge. He sees the Kraken just on the range of his dome there. You're seeing that bit of blue, and he gets him in, Jay Party. That's a big time catch. Just a tiny bit of armor for him to work with. Yeah, and that armor already disappearing here. It's not going to last more than a second or two here as he's forced to engage. Ooh, but he catches sight of the Medic for a second there, but not long enough as that personal cloak once again being utilized perfectly. Medic uses the personal cloak. He's going to try and dip down here and get some armor, which he just about does. It looks like they shot him off of that dead body just in time, Jay Party. They're still working on health. And look here again, the trapper up on the high ground, laying down those harpoon traps. He knows it's going to be the best chance to catch the monsters. You see in the background there, the harpoon traps catching the Kraken and locking him down. Yeah, and you can see them trying to hide here. The Kraken doesn't want to engage. You can see him on the defense here, but they're still getting lots of shots off on him here as his health is quickly dropping the half. Gets the oh, medic. Oh, but he nails him on across there. Got him again. Two strikes on the medic now. The medic is cloaked, though, so he's going to be hard to see. Here comes a big lightning strike, hits assault. This can be hard as a monster here. His health getting low, and he needs to guard the body. Rely on those knockbacks, prevent them from getting the medic up. But with his health this low already at stage two, the team might have the damage they need without a medic to just kill him. He tried to move that lightning strike to refocus it on the trapper, but it missed. That was a big time miss, as he could have finished off the medic. Medic is down, though. Medic is out. Medic's going to be waiting for the dropship. A minute 54. The rest of the team trying to finish him off with damage now, but there is no dome as it's on cooldown. Nice dodge by the trapper, though, to get out of the way of the Vortex. Yeah, the Assault staying in that fight with just a sliver of health, and that was so important as he was able to get so much damage off on the monster. His health being this low and the dropship on its way, I'm not sure what he wants to do here. This is an interesting spot to be in because they have no sustain on the Hunters. You could go for the final kill here, but his health so low, he's not going to last long in this fight. A oh, perfect yep, nice. personal shield. Perfect personal shield. He had that pop already the whole time. He knew he was going to pop it as soon as he engaged, trying to go in and finish him off. That shield's going to be out pretty soon, Joe, Jay Party, and there it goes. The monster can finish him off here. And he has no jetpack. He's struggling to move at all. And here comes the monster. Yeah, going back in on this fight. It looked like he was leaving. Oh, unfortunately for him, Hank is there with even more shielding as he just cannot break through this assault. Oh, and as I say it, of course, Hank drops the shield and assault immediately goes down to a Big huge time lightning strike. strike. He's got the trapper focus here now. The dome went up, but the trapper is focused. If he can get the trapper down, he has free movement. Got the trapper knocked in the corner, but look at that jetpack dodge, and he's out of there. Plus Plus, a harpoon perfectly placed, and the monster's locked down. Flamethrower coming in from Assault. Big time move from the Trapper here, and the Hunters are back in this fight. So well played by the support. The monster forgot about the Assault, and, and support snuck right in there with that cloak, revived him, and he's back in this fight. Such a key catch by the team, as now they have the damage they need to actually finish off the Kraken. Look at this mid-fight, getting some armor, and he's going to need every tick of health as he's going in for the final engage right That's here. That's a big time move mid-fight. He gets a bit of armor to work with, but the team here doing big damage, melting that armor down, taking it off. Off. Assault trying to finish him off with the flamethrower. Clutch shielding here from support, but it might be too little too late. Here comes the trapper around the backside trying to let damage as well. We learned 36 bullets in that magazine, Jay Party, and he's using them all right now on the craft. And they're going to need it here. They need to eke out every source of damage they can here as they've lost a lot of momentum in this fight, but the monster doesn't have much health left here. If he wants to go all in, he still can with the dropship coming in. I think he's going to run. I like that decision. He needs to get some health back here. Getting to stage three will give him the boost he needs to get back in the fight, but it's looking bad for the monster. Kraken on the move. The medic coming back in the dropship, Jay Party, but he will be with those two down penalties for the rest of the game. Worth noting, as if they engage again, he could be the first to fall and fall quickly.
Yeah, this game, although in the Hunter's favor, not by much. Look for a sloppy engage by them, and it'll be over before they know it here. The Kraken, such a high-impact monster, can just destroy this medic before he's even spotted if he plays his cards right. And the, the Kraken there getting some free mates in his belly. It's not only going to fill oh. up his armor there, but he's got his Evolve Meter filled as well. And down goes Assault. Sneaks in on the Assault there and hits him before he can activate the personal shield. Such good play there as he's going to try to finish the body off. But with Lazarus in this fight, I'm surprised he's going for that here. He needs to just keep an eye out for the medic, look for that res that he's going to eventually come in for. That is too much time spent on this assault, wasting a lot of time. He's going to try and eat him here. He's going to get a bite off, almost does it. Oh, they're trying so hard to stop it. If he's able to eat that body, not even Laz can revive him, and that's what he's trying to do here. But the Trapper, so important in this fight, that SMG continues to pepper him with damage. Oh, and he nails the medic there. And does nail the here. medic, but the medic finally is cloaked by support there. He's going to go in for that eat. One meat doesn't get the second meat. Oh, man, he is being interrupted there and <laughs> wasting way too much time trying to finish oh, oh. that assault off. Medic is dead with a big-time lightning strike. Oh, Medic's just... waiting for the dropship. Now he does not need to worry about that assault body. Now he can focus on these last two hunters. Oh, and just like that, down to the last two with the support, one of the big damage dealers, as well as the Trapper here. Let's see if they can keep up the fire and make down the monster before reinforcements come Monster in. on the run, 59 seconds on the dropship. Medic and assault out, down to the Trapper and support. They could finish this off J party, but look at this. Let's see what he does here. I hope that he does not try and engage with just his melee strikes. In fact, he doesn't even go for it, J-Party. That could be a make or break in this game. Yeah, both teams a little confused here. They're not sure who's chasing who at this point. The monster looking like he's leaving the fight, and the hunter is not quite chasing him either here. Both teams looking to just regroup, gather their forces for the next engage, which might be the last here as this monster running out of steam quickly. Three meat snack is going to build some armor. He is ready to evolve. He will gain some health back from that evolve to stage three. But the hunters have been pretty relentless so far. They're going to try and catch him when he's just evolved with no armor. This is a really rough spot to be in here. He's still farming, but he needs to evolve here. He's unsure what to do. He doesn't want to get sloppy. That 10 seconds in the cocoon could end your game. All it takes is Hank catching you with an ornal barrage in the cocoon, and that'll kill any monster here. If he gets caught, this is going to be terrible here. He's evolving right here. Jay Party's going to put all three, maybe? No, he's going to go two into Banshee and one into Aftershock. He is vulnerable right here, right now. And a support coming in with the big orbital barrage. It's going to hit for a little bit, but the monster's out of there. Uh -oh. Not in time, Jay Party. Not Just too enough. little, too late. I know. Oh, oh with the arena catches wow. it on the edge there. Did not expect that as they're going in with only two of them. But the last two are dropping in right now. Hopefully they're deployed close to the fight as they're going to need support quickly in this engage. Trapper with the sneaky arena there catches him just at the last second. This is a good catch for the Hunters. They need to hold him here, try and do some damage while the rest of their team comes in. But they need to be careful not to die themselves. Although here comes the Medic and here comes Assault. Keeping a nice spread here, but Assault and Medic on two strikes, they're going to fall so fast in this match if they're not careful. They need to be quick on the reaction speeds to prevent teammates from dying here as Medic could take a big hit. Oh, Gets nailed wow. by the Lightning Strike. And Assault as well. He hit both of them with that strike. Assault had to pop his personal shield. Medic trying to be uh, held up by support with that shield. And here finally is Assault. Oh! oh! Finally Assault, Vortex and finally strike. Assault goes down. Vortex Strike across the face takes their main damage force out. They only have three Hunters. Oh, but Medic goes down immediately too, and it's back to the Trapper. And we're going to see the damage coming from this SMG, as this is the primary source of damage they have left here, as it's down to just support and Trapper. And they are not heeding the facts uh, there, Jay Party. They're going all in with the button press just laying in with the full clip. 36 bullet by 36 bullet, and look at the health drop from range. Yeah, great play by the Trapper, showing you the strength of how much damage really comes from this class. It's not your soul, it's your secondary damage source, and it's still a good source of damage. The monster gets no room to feed as he's running quickly out of health here. And there he goes, he's on the way, but he's still being pelted from behind. Relentless Hunters here. He has nothing to work with there in terms of health. Let's see if he can get some armor built up. Oh, this fight is going to come down to such an interesting situation. You know, a monster can take down any Hunter in one-on-one -on -one with a pounce attack without taking any damage. Unfortunately for him, there are two Hunters still standing. He has to deal with one, and then he can instantly take down the other. Oh, I was mistaken there. Assault back in this fight. I don't even see how that happened. Looks like Laz got the revives before he went down in that fight, and that makes this much more of a precarious situation, as the monster definitely can't take on three hunters. And what I love, Jay Party, is these guys are not trying to take the fight to the power relay. They are trying to take the fight to the monster. The monster trying to get that elite 
Pirate in the pool there, and they catch him. Another dome. He's trapped, and they're going in on the monster. Such good game sense there. They all went straight towards the Elite Tyrant. They knew exactly his only means for escape in this was to get that health regen, and he doesn't get it. Now they can finally take it to him in this final fight and hopefully take down the Kraken. And you're seeing them doing work there. You're seeing the Banshee Mines come out, but as you can see, they can be destroyed by gunfire. Big time Vortex <laughs> knocks the Trapper back as the Vor or Trapper there was doing the majority of the damage. Here comes the Lightning Strike. That should be game oh, over. Oh, and he wow. misses it. Gets it too Big close. time miss. Such a bad, costly miss there. He could have killed the Assault, removing a lot of the damage from this team. Unfortunately, he's still in this fight as he's just cut a sliver of Elflift and they can't find him. Can't find him. Slippery little devil he is. On the run, they have no idea where he is. Finally find him, J-Party. No, Daisy finds him. And that's it, J-Party. He's down to a sliver of hell. There comes the Trapper. Oh, oh gets knocked back again. But they finish him.